Hello everyone, I'm back with the one month review of the iPhone 15 Pro Max. I've been using this as a primary device in some respects, which especially when it comes to photo and video, uh, especially video. But for the most part, it's a secondary device, although I do use it um, quite often because it's my family phone. Many of my family members have iPhones, so the iMessage, the FaceTime comes in pretty handy. Um, my I'm just going to say it up front. My primary complaint about this is the price. I think it could be a little cheaper. 1200 bucks, 256 gigabytes. Now, technically, they didn't raise the price because the iPhone 14 Pro Max at 256 gigabytes was the same price, 1199. Um, they just they took away the 128 gigabyte option, which I think is unfortunate. I think they should have kept that. But, you know, what can you do? It is what it is. Other than the price, though, I must say, you know, I can't really complain about the performance of the phone for the most part. The build quality is fantastic, right? The titanium build is great. I think it's it's much lighter. So that's one thing I definitely appreciate about it over the 13 Pro Max. And I did try out the 14 Pro Max for a while, but I just didn't think it was worth the upgrade. Um, so I didn't ever upgrade it to the 14 Pro Max. And you know the lightness of this and the build quality, the titanium build, it's great. Um, I think that, you know, I, I don't have any issues with it. I've dropped it two times without a case, one really hard, and I thought it was going to come up cracked, but actually it didn't. That was right here on the backside here, and nothing happened. Um, so, you know, I was pretty shocked on that one, I must say. Uh, the video quality, the camera quality, I think, is top two. I think the, the one camera I would say that gives it a run for its money or perhaps is even better is, in fact, the, the phone that I'm videotaping this with, and that's the Google Pixel 8 Pro. I really love the portrait mode on the Pixel 8 Pro. Video quality, though, I don't I don't think it's matched. I don't think that anyone can touch the iPhone um, 15 Pro Max at this point in terms of video. Uh, and by the way, if you want to check out a, uh, a really good, and I don't know any of these folks, I'm just um, going to share this with you. Um, this gentleman here, Gadget Review Now, he does a really, this video right here, he does a real good comparison between the 8 Pro, Pixel 8 Pro and the iPhone 15 Pro Max. And that's his channel there. So I think if you wanna um, get a good uh, a comparison video, I'm not really uh, one to do that. There are people that are better at that, at that uh, than I am. So I'll leave that to them. But from my perspective, the video quality is the best on the market. What, and what I really like about it um, is, you know, and I say this for my fellow parents out there, right? You got a kid running around, especially little ones. The motion is just, there's no worry. Like you're gonna get the shot. You're gonna get your kid running around. I found with some of the other phones, um, especially the Samsung, when I had the 20, S23 Ultra, uh, even with this Google Pixel 8 Pro, uh, sometimes I feel like it's a little robotic on the Pixel and I feel like sometimes it gets too blurry. Like you can't even get the shot with the, with the S23 Ultra on the video side of it. So. And even on the photo side of it, frankly. Um, so I think, uh, you know, what I did like the S23 Ultra 4 was like the long range shots. That was nice. But when you got kids running around, pets running around, this is a parent's phone right here in that sense, right? You're going to get the shot. You're going to get your kid. And that's going to be, um, you know, something that you don't have to worry about. Uh, yeah. So just, you know, you're not going to miss it. So I think that's that's a big deal. Another aspect of the video quality that I think isn't really discussed as much or talked about as much as the microphone performance. Um, I don't know if you can tell, you know, those of you who watch more than one of my videos, uh, I can tell the difference on YouTube uh, when I'm filming, because I film mostly with this phone for the YouTube videos that I post. If I'm not actually reviewing this phone, I'm filming with this phone. And I feel like the microphone performance is better. Now I will say the Pixel 8 Pro microphone performance as well is pretty good. So I think that's probably, they're pretty close in that regard, but I just feel like this is the best one, especially in canceling out some of the background noise. Sometimes I think that there's a, some background noise happening or I can hear it uh, on my end. And then I watch, and I even mention it sometimes in some of the videos that I make for YouTube. And you all don't even, like you can't, and then I watch the video just to kind of see how it is. And you all can't even, you know, hear it because I can't hear it on uh, as well. So that's something I think that's, you know, just a little underrated there uh, in that regard. The screen, the screen brightness is great. Like the new, you know, brightness. I live in, you know, a Los Angeles area, California, 
and you know there's no there's no issues there like it gets bright in the sun doesn't matter how bright the sun is i'm going to be able to see this phone so that's been outstanding and i can't say that for the 13 pro max that was one of the the pet peeves i had with my 13 pro max is sometimes i couldn't see um the uh you know the screen because it was so bright outside and i'd have to kind of angle it to see what i was looking at so that's not an issue anymore um the other thing I think that's underrated uh, as well is um, the USB-C uh, capabilities. And, and I don't, again, I'm not, an, I'm not an expert at this, but there's a gentleman, Steve Robles, I think his name is. Um, let me see if I can find a real video scrolling up real quick. His channel is, uh, let me go to subscriptions here. Um, his channel is actually really good as well, kind of doing more technical type stuff. Here it is right here. So Steven Robles, he's got a, a good video that I would really strongly recommend if you want to um, kind of understand like the USB-C uh, capabilities of this phone, you can kind of look it up. Here we go. So the iPhone 15, now a computer thanks to USB-C. So he's done a couple of videos on this topic and I, you know, I check out his channel to, to watch that because the USB-C, um, you know, the, just the plugging in, that's great. It's convenient. We all have USB-C stuff, no problem. But the other capabilities that it has beyond that in terms of adding memory um, and other things that you can do with it, he breaks it down pretty well. Uh, so there's that. Um, you know, so I think that that's a, a good, the potential use cases are great. Face ID is amazing as per usual. No issues there. It's outstanding. The chip is unmatched. The a is A17. The battery is absolutely ridiculous on this phone. It's as good, if not better, than my 13 Pro Max. Some people say the 13 Pro Max is still better. I haven't had that experience. I've literally gotten consistently on a day where I drive, uh, I'll use it for Google Maps, um, you know, run the video games just constantly just to see if I can burn the battery easily low at the low end, eight and a half to nine hours of screen on time. I've gotten one day I was home with just on Wi-Fi and I mentioned this in my last video, I got 13 hours of screen on time just running it, just again, trying to put it through its paces as I was just sitting there doing my work, just tapping the video, letting it play, tapping the game, letting it play on autoplay, just to see if I can burn that battery down. And on Wi-Fi, I couldn't do it. It was it was absolutely ridiculous. Um, so that's good. Um, those are all like the real positive things I like about this phone. Now, there are some complaints. My biggest complaint with the Apple um, phone, with iPhone and you know, I don't use iPads anymore. Uh, it's just the iOS. I mean, I think the widgets, you know, the widgets are crap. Um, you know, it's just, this is not meant for somebody who's watching a video like this, right? Like a tinker, somebody who wants to, you know, use this and maybe get more out of it than just what's, you know, what is available, like immediately to the general public, right? Like this is a phone that is um, for that crowd. Okay, notifications. I feel like my notifications get lost in a weird kind of way. I don't know what it is, but I always feel like they're more present on an Android phone. Um, I don't know why that is, but I just feel like they're they're just more present on an Android phone. So it's I just feel like it's just easier to interact. Um, Dynamic Island. I mean, I still don't see what the point is, to be really honest with you. Um, you know, it cuts off the screen. You're trying to watch a video and, uh, you know. What's up, guys? We all H back with another video. And there it is. Like, it cuts it off, right? Like, you know, it cuts it off there. And, I, you know, I think, like, I could only imagine what this is like on, like, the four, the 15 Pro. If you have a much smaller phone, that island's going to take up even more space. And then it kind of cuts off, like, a little bit here. And you still got a little piece here. It's just, it's not very... It's, to me, it's just not very well done. I, and again, I don't have any complaints about the face ID. I think that's outstanding. But, you know, I don't know. It just, to me, it doesn't seem like it's, it's very well done. Um, not a big fan. Uh, there's no multi-screen, multitasking, things of that nature. And I think that's where the chipset is being underutilized. Just like with the iPad uh, Pros, you have an, an amazing chip. M1, M2, on the on the MacBook Pro I have, it's awesome. But why not, you know, why not use your chips to their capabilities? You know, why not add more features in here? Even if you even if this phone is meant for the general public, but there are people who tinker, you can give people both options. 
I know a lot of people who use Samsung phones because they like the screens or they like the vibrancy of the pictures, that sort of more a colorful, like vibrant look. Um, and, you know, you can, the, the regular crowd, quote unquote, use that phone, the mainstream crowd. And then the tinkerers could use that phone as well, the people who like to do other stuff with it. And I just wish Apple would just loosen the reins a little bit. They don't have to be all open, you know, and let everybody do whatever they want or whatever. I mean, I would like to move my widgets around, my, my icons around where I like them. I don't like all these icons on my front page. Things like that would be nice. But, you know, you don't have to necessarily open it up completely, but you can, you know, allow a little more flexibility, I think. Um, you know, there's that. So, you know, that's another complaint I have. Uh, Siri, you know, Siri's garbage. I, you know, I say, you know, hey, Siri, set a timer. That's about it, right? I mean, things like that. I, you know, set an alarm, add something to reminders. If I use reminders, I do use that sometimes. Uh, but, you know, it doesn't compare to like the Google, you know, uh, system in that sense, like the Google AI uh, and what have you. My son even gets frustrated with it. He'll ask, hey, Siri, you want to ask a question? And it's like, well, I just triggered it. Um, he wants to ask a question and it's about whatever. And then he's like, oh, I hate Siri. It doesn't, um, you know, they never tells me the answer or what have you. And, you know, it's just, I mean, I just don't, what's the point? Other than to to say, this is what it's for. It's just to give the, the phone commands. Okay, cool. Then that's all it's for, but don't act like it's something special because it's not, okay? Um, so that's another complaint I have. Um, I think that the, I think that the, um, ecosystem question is something that kind of reigns Apple users and iPhone users in. And I think it's becoming less and less relevant and it matters a little bit less, especially with now you have like Google, the Google suite, um, you know, other options that you may be able to have where you can kind of access your information. So if you use Google Photos on this, that might be an option. There's actually another great video I want to point out. Let's see if I can find it really quick um, that speaks to that. And I thought it was a really well done and thoughtful video. Um, and I, again, I don't know any of these folks, so I'm not you know trying to pump anyone up or anything. These are just uh, videos I found useful. Um, I'll kind of scroll through this and, and kind of keep talking. But, you know, I think that... Um, uh, he did a really good job with uh, kind of tell, kind of suggesting how you can get out of the ecosystem. Here it is right here. So Alex Tech has a really good video on how to avoid the Apple versus Android ecosystem problems. And I thought that was a really great video because he does use um, multiple devices and he uses, um, he likes to kind of mix it up. And there are certain aspects of Android and certain aspects of Apple that you might like. I, you know, I think the ecosystem question is perhaps a little less important than it used to be. But I could totally see if you have an Apple computer, if you have an, a phone, you want your calendar in both places. You got the AirDrop thing. You got the FaceTime thing, uh, iMessage. Uh, you want everything available on all your devices. You know, that's what it touts. That's what it's about. Right. But at the same time, I feel like there are a lot of glitches in that system that people don't talk about. Like. I try to airdrop something sometimes from my phone to my computer and it doesn't always take. Um, the I, AirPods are horrible. They go when they go back and forth between the computer and the phone. And it doesn't, it can't make up its mind. Like it, it's just, I've had really terrible experiences with AirPods to the point where I don't even hardly use them anymore. So the ecosystem question I think is a little overblown um, to a certain extent. Um, but at the end of the day, what this phone is, as I mentioned before, is an appliance. This is what Steve Jobs' vision was for the iPhone. It was about, you know, getting it in everyone's hands, making it simple to use. There are a lot of Apple haters out there, and I think it's silly. It's childish. It doesn't matter what phone you use. Like, I really, you know, my manhood isn't, like, inv invested in what phone I use. I mean, it's just stupid. Um, but... You know, those are people who don't, you know, who get frustrated with it. I can understand because of the 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 potential that it has. And it's a little frustrating to not be able to to, you know, kind of realize that potential, especially with the iPad pros. I just, you know, I, I find that really frustrating even more so. But the this is an appliance. And you have to think about it that way. It's what Steve Jobs envisioned, right, to get everybody's hands, make it simple to use. Nobody has to ask a lot of questions, takes good pictures. 
uh, lasts a long time. You know, it's a very simple interface and that's it. And so if you take it for what it is, then you're gonna be really happy with it. Um, if you're trying to make it something that it's not, then, you know, go get another phone. Uh, use a Samsung. Use uh, the Google Pixel if you prefer that. Whatever it is that, you know, you think uh, this doesn't you know work for you, then that's cool. But don't knock it because it's, it's good quality in, in for what it is, okay? Um, so I'll just leave it at that. Now, here's another thing that I think, you know, to kind of conclude this a little bit. You know, if I had the, a, a significant other, I had a wife, I have a girlfriend, whatever it is, boyfriend, whatever, husband, and I want a phone in their hands that I know is going to be reliable, that I know if they're out late at night with my kids, the battery's not going to die. You know, I'm getting double battery life on this versus the Pixel 8 Pro, like literally double the battery life. I mean, I want this in their hands, right? If it's late at night and, you know, um, I got a wife with children and I want to make sure they're going to get home and I can contact them. That battery, uh, that battery life alone is why I'd want this phone in their hands. So, you know, just it's little things like that that you have to understand. It's not, this is not, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles. This is not a science project. This is not an AI um, kind of, uh, uh, an AI experiment, right? It's not a phone for tinkers. It's a it's an appliance. It's like your refrigerator. It's like your car. It starts you know just turn it on, starts up. Open the fridge, your food's cold. You know, do your laundry, put put in the washing machine, gets washed. That's what this is. So don't take it for anything more than what than that. Um, you know, it does happen to have the good camera, has great battery, has all the things that people need. Uh, there are still some deals available. So I think the trade ins have gotten worse over the years. I remember when you used to almost be able to trade it in and only spend a couple hundred bucks and now you have to spend you know almost like you only get like half of what your phone used to be worth uh you're better off probably if you have an iphone you're better off probably selling it on the open market and then getting as much as you can for it and then putting it into this but if you have a 13 pro max if you have a 14 pro max especially a 14 pro max i don't think it's necessarily worth the upgrade unless the weight you know i do the gym short test if you know the 14 the 13 pro max used to pull my gym shorts down. I was at the gym and, you know, they didn't, you know, I didn't like carrying that phone too much. So I'd like to take a lighter phone when I went to the gym. You know, this doesn't have that issue anymore. So, you know, unless that's a major issue or if you have a 13 Pro Max and you want some of the raw camera features, I think it's worth it. Um, I would go for it. But otherwise, stick to your 13 Pro Max or your 14 Pro Max. I think you're fine. I would say if you have a 12 Pro Max, I would definitely upgrade just for the battery alone. Uh, but, you know, uh, there's that. But at the end of the day, you can have the iOS experience on pretty much any iPhone. Like that's and, you know, that's good and bad. I mean, I think it's good that, you, you know, this can be accessible to everyone in that way. Um, and I don't think Apple gets enough props for that aspect of it. Like people complain about how overpriced it is, but you don't have to buy the expensive, fancy one. You could buy the 799 iPhone 4, 15, get a really good camera and at a much 500 bucks less. You could buy an iPhone 13 on the open market or you know, in the secondary market for like four or 500 bucks now and get a, the same experience. So in that way, I think it's good. You know, you can complain about the OS, but at the same time it's accessible. And of course the updates last for a really long time. You can have a really old iPhone and it'll still get all of the uh, latest I iOS um, features and what have you. So there's that. So if you're okay, um, you know, with spending the money, this is a great phone. If you're not, then, you know, get some cheaper or stick to what you have or, you know, go for one of the other options. If you're thinking about an Android phone in comparison to this, my inclination is to go for, um, and if and obviously battery life can't really be as big of an issue, is to go for the Google Pixel 8 Pro if you're more of a tinkerer, if you're more of somebody who wants more features and you're frustrated with this, then I would say I would go for the S23 Ultra, unless you want to go for a foldable. I opted for the Z Fold 5 over the S23 Ultra because I wanted that foldable experience. Although, admittedly, I'm getting a little frustrated with not being able to find that case that holds the S Pen properly and not having to use that new S Pen, but that's another video. Um, 
I think that, uh, you know, that would be the S23 Ultra is probably the phone I would get. Overall, uh, bang for your buck. I don't think the Google Pixel 8 Pro at this point, without the trade in values that were high when it first came out and without the free watch, is worth it because now what you're only paying that phone if you go feature if you go um gigabyte for gigabyte like 256 it's not 999 you have to go to the 1059 and then this is 1199 so for 140 bucks more i'd go for this okay um especially just for the battery life alone i think the pictures are maybe the google pixel 8 pro is a little bit better the video camera is better on this I don't really see the OS unless you're really into the AI stuff, which I totally can get if you are. You know, they're both simple, simplistic phones. They're both appliance type phones. They're not like the Galaxy phone where you're the S23 Ultra, where you can tinker a lot with it and do have many more features. The Pixel is for the iPhone crowd. That's why they were giving such good trade-ins on the iPhones because they're trying to pull people from the iPhone, right? They're sort of the the iPhone of Android in that way. So. If you're gonna, if you don't want this, if it's too expensive, which I totally get, and I'm not saying, oh, people don't have the money. I mean, it, it's expensive. Is it worth 1,200 bucks? No, absolutely not. Not for what it does. But if you're comparing, you know, the $140 price difference, then I think it is worth it. However, if you're gonna get a holiday, you know, wait for the holiday seasons, and then make the decision. Um, you know, and as far as like, you know, getting a deal on some of these phones. Um, but, you know, I can't complain about this phone. It's a great, fantastic device. It's just very expensive. Uh, you know, it is what it is. Don't try to think of it as more than what it is. And uh, if you're cool with that, then I then I, all day long, get this phone. If you're not, I could totally understand why you spend much less money to get a phone that's going to be pretty much do most of the same things. Um, so there's that. Anyhow, this, vo this video is getting on <laughs> a little long, so I'm going to let it go now. Uh, I hope you're well. I hope your family's well, and uh, take care of yourself, and I'll see you next time.